You're listening to the 10 minute podcast challenge that will prove every place is the same. Welcome your host, the irreverent, the cosmopolitan, the wicked, Daniela Vlaskalik. Hello, and welcome to Every Place is the Same. I am thrilled to have my guest today, Daniela Vlaskalik. Welcome. Hi. Daniela, let me ask you something. You have lived for part of your life in the city of Toronto. That is correct. And that's in Canada. Yes, it is. Paint me a postcard picture of this city. Well, it's very hustling, bustling. There's a lot of new buildings going up, condos, streetcars, many streetcars, old and new. What do you mean by old? Well, there are streetcars that are quite a few years old now. They're quite problematic. They break down a lot. But the city has commissioned several new streetcars that we are having some problems with. And back to the city. Well, the city has got old buildings, new buildings. It's uh, full of neighborhoods. So if you like neighborhoods, it's really the kind of city for you. You really don't need to leave your neighborhood if you don't want to. It has a butcher, it has a cheese shop, it has a... Have a baker? It does have a baker. What about a candlestick maker? Well, I don't know about that, but there are plenty of candles to be had in Toronto, so I'm sure you could find a nice candle shop. Belgrad. Paint me the postcard of Belgrad. Well, Belgrade is an old city. Um, you'll find uh, buildings that are newer. You will find old buildings and you'll find bombed out buildings that have been uh, remained that way since the war in the 90s. It's, uh, it's also... Would you go to bars in Belgrade? You do. There are wonderful bars and beautiful restaurants. Have you been to bars in Toronto? I have. Have you ever been bombed in a bar in Toronto? Yes, I have. Four seasons in Belgrade. Yes, uh, it definitely has four seasons. It's, um, Belgrade is right on uh, where two rivers meet, the Danube and the Sava. And it was a very integral political place um, from as far back as the Romans and even as far back as the Greeks. The first uh, mention of the city of Belgrade in history is that uh, Medea sailed down the uh, Danube past the city of Belgrade when she was fleeing with Jason. And does water play an important part in the city of Toronto? Yes, it does. Uh, Toronto is on Lake Ontario, and uh, much of the city is built along the water. And you can see where there are factories, old, new, and the waterfront is developing. And I'm sure that at one time there were many boats that came through there. Interesting. Is Belgrade a good city to meet people? Yes, it's a great city. People are very friendly, they are very proud of their city, um, and they love to take you around and show you all the historical spots, as well as eat the good food and have the great drinks. Where would we meet if I was meeting you in Belgrade? Well, I would probably take you to Skadarlia, which is quite a famous uh, neighborhood. It has, uh, it's full of beautiful restaurants that have uh, stunning outdoor patios. And the big thing about Skadarlia is that there's music. They play traditional folk music. So bands will wander from restaurant to restaurant and play music, as well as actors will come dressed in traditional clothes and they'll do monologues about the history of that street and the history of Belgrade. Could you meet friends in Toronto? Yes, there's many places to meet. Um, Coffee shops, restaurants, bars, on the street, beautiful parks, in the beaches. There's a beautiful uh, beach area. Where would we meet? I think if I was going to meet you, I would take you to 
um, the Roy, which is a, a local pub in my area that's cozy, um, and I like to go there in the winter. Did you know that Belgrade was one of the main centers for the Yugoslav New Wave movement in the 1980s? No, I didn't know that. It included bands like Electrina Velika, Sarlo Akrobata, Electrinica Orgasm. I didn't know that. I knew that they had a real um, movement in that area of that sort of electronic music, but my relationship to the music from that city has always been the more traditional, the violins and clarinets and the accordion, of course. Not electronic, but new wave. Did you listen to new wave in the 80s? I listened to some new wave. Did you have a new wave hairstyle? Um, yeah, well, I had sort of, if you call a spiral perm, um, a new wave hairstyle. I had a lot of perms, so. What about a mullet? Um, I had kind of had the opposite of a mullet. I had it sh really short in the back and long on top. Ha! Huh. Did you know that Toronto was an important center for new wave music in the 1980s? No, I didn't know that. Carol Pope and Rough Trade. Martha and the Muffins. Platinum Blonde. I love Platinum Blonde. My sister used to sing, crying, crying over you. Hopefully she sang it better than that. Tell me about winter in Toronto. Yes, it's cold, it's wet. Uh, Toronto is very humid. Would you say there's a lot of snow? Yes, um, I would say that, I mean, because it's a big city, there isn't as much snow within the city limits, but definitely um, around the city of Toronto, around Ontario, there is a, a great deal of snow. Could you say it's a winter white city? Y yes, I think you could. Do you know what Belgrade means? Well, I know Grad means city, and Bell is beautiful, I think. In French, perhaps. But it means white city. Oh, Belo, yes. So Belo is white. Exactly. Do you know what Toronto means? I don't. Meeting place. Oh. So it sounds like Toronto is a winter white city and Belgrade is a winter white city and both Toronto and Belgrade are great cities to meet people. I would agree with that, absolutely. They are great cities to meet in. How do you say the city of Toronto? Toronto. How do you say the city of Belgrade? Belgrade. Did you know that current day Belgrade is the hub for Serbian hip-hop scene? I didn't know Serbians had hip-hop. Well, they do. Beogradski Syndikat? Skabo Marcello? Interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating, actually. Perhaps it's time for you to pick up some Belgrad hip-hop. I think I will. Question, Toronto hip-hop scene? I'm sure there is. I don't, there's so many different categories. What about Drake? Well, I was about to ask, would Drake be classified as hip-hop? Why wouldn't he? I don't know. What is hip-hop exactly? Mm. Is hip-hop the same as being a rap artist? Daniela, hip-hop is a style of popular music featuring rap with an electronic backing. Ah, thank you for that clarification. I think much like the two cities of Toronto and Belgrade, they go hand in hand. Imagine that. Alex Lifeson. Milos Ranić. Ben Mulroney. What do they have in common? Uh, well, they are all uh, Serbian and they play tennis. Well, Milos Ranić is a tennis player. Ben Mulroney maybe plays tennis, but he's the son of Brian Mulroney, who is the one of the prime ministers of Canada. And who was the third? Alex Lifeson. Sorry, I don't know who Alex Lifeson is. 
guitarist of one of the most famous and iconic bands, Rush. See, I don't even know the difference between hip-hop and rap, so... One could say, wow. Belgrade. Museums? Yes, there are. Um, there are a lot of museums on the history of the city. Uh, but I didn't go... T I mean, I'm sure there are art museums, but I didn't go to any. Unusual museums in Belgrade? Well, there is the Nikola Tesla Museum. Um, Nikola Tesla was, of course, Serbian. And he uh, invented or discovered electricity and is now responsible. Well, now there is a... And the light bulb and other many other things that are connected to electricity and there's now a car that is named after Nikola Tesla which is the Tesla. Unusual museums in Toronto. Well there's the Bata Shoe Museum so if you were really interested in the history of shoes or had a shoe fetish you could go there and you could check out the shoes. What about forts in Belgrade? Well, there's Cal de Megdon, which is uh, a very famous Roman fortress that still stands, that has been there for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it's um, a very popular tourist attraction today. You can walk through the old fort, and um, you can see where it's been added on and taken apart, and it's actually quite stunning. It sits right on the corner uh, in that strategic spot where the two rivers, uh, the Danube and the Sava, meet. Sounds like the two rivers have a meeting place in Belgrade. Yes, absolutely they do. Forts in Toronto? Uh, yes, there's um, Fort York. Important fort? Yes, it's very important. Tell me more. Well, Fort York was very important because it was the birthplace of urban Toronto and it's best known for the location of a very violent climax in 1813 during the war of 1812. If I needed to be fortified with some alcohol, would there be fortification near Fort York? Yes, you could go to the Wheat Chief, which is a fabulous pub where they serve all kinds of great beers and wines, and I think that you could be very well fortified there. Indeed. And Daniela, rumor has it that the Wheat Sheaf pub has an underground tunnel that will connect you to the inside of Fort York. So, Daniela Vlaskalik. Daniela, I think you helped prove that Toronto, Canada, where you currently live, and Belgrade in Serbia, where your family once lived, are in fact the same. So, Daniela Vlaskalik, if you want to be fortified, if you like hip-hop or new wave, and need a center in either city, or if you want to take your mullet out and meet someone in a winter white place, you have helped us prove that Toronto, Canada, and Belgrade in Serbia are in fact the same. Thank you. I'm, I'm completely stunned. You just listened to Every Place is the Same, hosted by Daniela Vlaskalik and produced by Drumcast Productions. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at Every Place is the Same. Until the next time, enjoy your travels.